After making videos on budget lenses for the better part of four years, I can confidently say there is one lens that people have been requesting over and over and over again. And if you look in the comments of any of my videos where I feature one of these budget lenses that gets you incredibly high quality results, uh, great in low light, amazing background blur, incredible sharpness, pretty much everything you could possibly ask for out of a photo or video lens, but it is a manual focus lens, the comment I get is too bad it's manual focus. Over and over and over, hundreds of comments, too bad it's manual focus. Everybody has been waiting for an autofocus lens which has performance that is on par or near enough to these incredible manual focus lenses. And today I've got a lens that I think answers all those questions and represents the lens that people have been waiting for all these years. Now this is a super budget lens and it is for an autofocus lens, it is almost unheard of cheap. So it's not perfect, but for the price, I think it's near enough. This is a 35 millimeter F 1.8 APS-C lens. And a 35 millimeter on APS-C is the same field of view as 50 millimeters on full frame. And that 50 millimeter field of view or 35 millimeters on APS-C is just a super, super versatile focal length. There's so much that you can do with a 35 millimeter lens on an APS-C camera. And 35 millimeters represents quite a sweet spot when it comes to taking pictures of people. And that's because you're not gonna get a lot of distortion like you might with something that's a bit wider than 35 millimeters, but you're also gonna be able to get back a little bit and still get a photo of a person and show them in the environment and the surrounding environment that they're in. This is important because there are situations where you might wanna get close to somebody, open up that maximum aperture f1.8 and get that traditional blurry background portrait style shot. But if you're traveling and you're in a city or in your landscape or you're someplace that you want to show that person and the environment they're in, you don't wanna just blur out that background. You can just get back a little bit. If you stop your aperture down to f5.6 or f8, that is gonna bring the background into focus and you're gonna be able to see that person and the environment that they're in. So when it comes to taking portraits and pictures of people in a variety of different environments, this is an absolutely perfect focal length. And I think particularly for family, family travel, when you're going with your friends, this is a type of lens that's so versatile that you could just put this lens on the camera and you could just run with it and it might be the only lens you need for a wide range of situations. The other thing that 35 millimeters on APS-C is great for is street photography. Now I will say the traditional focal length for street photography is 23 to 25 millimeters on an APS-C camera. I actually find that focal length a little bit too tight, meaning I have to get a little bit closer to my subjects than I want. 35 millimeters allows me to get a subject, show them in the environment they're in, and allows me to take a photo in a situation where I don't feel like I have to be right on top of them. It just gets me that little bit of extra distance, which is a little bit less confronting and is a bit more comfortable for me, particularly when you're starting out and you just kind of want to take those more stealthy street photography photos. You don't want people to actually see you putting the camera in their face. 35 millimeters is a much, much better focal length for that type of purpose. And because of that, it is my preferred focal length for street photography. The other thing this lens is gonna be great for is anytime you find yourself in a low light situation because f1.8 is the maximum aperture on this lens. That means it opens up quite wide and allows a lot of light to hit the sensor. The more light that hits the sensor, the cleaner that your images are going to be. That means that when the lights go down, you're out using this as your all purpose travel lens, Unlike the kit lens where things start to get messy, most kit lenses start at about f3.5 and end up at about f5.6 or f6.3 at the end of their zoom range. This 35 millimeters is f1.8. Your images are going to be noticeably cleaner, noticeably better in low light situations. You're gonna get better saturation, better detail, and overall you are going to get a much nicer, much cleaner photo in low light situations. So if you're, have the kit lens right now and you're not happy with the photos that you're getting, particularly in low light situations, you are going to notice a huge difference when shooting with this lens. The other thing this lens is gonna be great for is anytime you wanna draw the viewer's eye strictly to the subject that you've got in the frame. Now this might be an object, it might be some food that you're you know, taking a photo of food when you're traveling, it might be a portrait, uh, it might be a picture of your dog. Anytime that you want the viewer to strictly focus on that subject, 
because it does have a maximum open opening of f1.8, that allows you to get a very blurry background. This is another thing that people who only have the kit lens so far aren't able to achieve. You just can't get a very blurry background or much subject separation with the kit lens. So this is going to be a huge upgrade in that regard. And this is also one of the biggest disappointments I see with people with their kit lens or less expensive lenses. F1.8 is going to allow you to achieve that blurry background look, and it's gonna make it easier for the viewer to look at your photo and know exactly what they're supposed to be looking at. And then the background just drops away in kind of a, a creamy, dreamy, blurry mess, and their eye will be drawn to the subject that you focused on. Looking at the build and handling on this lens, this is a TT Artisan lens, and I have not ever tested a lens from them that was a poorly built lens. The lens itself doesn't feel overly heavy and it doesn't feel overly light either. It is a metal lens body. It is built on a polished metal lens mount. The lens itself, I do believe, has some plastic components in it, but for the most part, the parts of the lens that you are touching or feeling or seeing are metal. The lens also does come with a pinch plastic lens cap and it comes with a lens hood as well. And this is quite a cool lens hood, which works quite well and helps reduce flaring, particularly when you have light coming from the side. The other thing that you get with this lens, which is totally unique, I haven't really seen this from anybody except for TT Artisans, is it comes with a rear lens cap, which has a USB-C port on the back of the cap. That allows you to update the firmware in the lens without having any USB-C port on the lens itself, which I think is really a unique thing and it works quite well. And I actually recently just updated the firmware on this lens. Another thing I will note while I'm thinking about the firmware, there are some of the third-party manufacturers out there that their lenses will not update if you're using a Mac computer. I am using a Mac or an Apple computer and I was able to update, the, update this lens's firmware. So, if you're worried about that, that's not gonna be a concern with this lens. The lens is gonna be available on three different mounts at this stage, Nikon, Sony, and Fuji. It doesn't look like they're releasing all the lens mounts at the same time, even though I do have both a Fuji and Sony copy of the lens. I will put some links in the description down below so you can go check and see what's available and what the current pricing is on the lens. But at the moment, I think they're only going to be release it, releasing it in the initial release on one of the lens mounts. Looking at the image quality on this lens, the first thing I want to look at is distortion. And when you look at the distortion performance on this lens, it does have a slight bit of barrel distortion. Now, it is linear, so it is easy to correct in Lightroom or Capture One or whatever editing program that you're using. And it's nothing that I would really worry about. And in all the photo samples and video samples you've seen in this video, I have not corrected that distortion, that little bit of barrel distortion at all. So I don't think it really is something that I would worry about. Looking at the vignette performance on it, it is surprisingly good for an f1.8 lens at this price point. I expected, and you see this on cheaper lenses sometimes, they actually make it so it, it really doesn't have very good sensor coverage and you get extremely dark corners. The performance in this regard is pretty good. There is some level of vignette, but nothing that I am overly concerned about. And once again, in all the sample images that you've seen in this video, uh, I have not correct them at all. So that is what the vignette performance looks like right out of camera, completely untouched. And really, I felt no need to, to correct the vignette. When it comes to chromatic aberration, once again, very little chromatic aberration for a cheap f1.8 lens. I was shocked. In fact, I must not be the best at seeing chromatic aberration because I can't really see any, but at this price point, I presume if you really zoom in and in certain situations, there might be some, but whatever is there is so minor that it's not something that is even worth mentioning or worrying about. The other thing we wanna look at when we're looking at chromatic aberration is longitudinal chromatic aberration, and that is color fringing on the out of focus areas before and after the plane of focus. This can be distracting with some lenses because what you'll get is a background blur that maybe is tinted like purple or green or a foreground that is a blur that is tinted red or some other color. In this case, I really see virtually no longitudinal chromatic aberration. Well, at least in all the situations I've tested. Looking at flare performance, I think that is the one place that this manufacturer has not quite caught up to the first party manufacturers like Canon, Nikon, and Sony. And I think this really comes down to the lens coating. Now, this lens is not the worst I've tested, and there's certainly worse out there, but it's not the best either. 
It is better than a number of their previous lens releases, so it shows me that they are getting better and better all the time. What you will find is in some situations when you have the light coming from a certain angle, you will either get some ghosting or a bit of a washed out image, or in night scenes, you might even get some sort of crazy, almost psychedelic color smear going across the screen, which is a really unique look and some people actually like, but it's definitely considered an optical imperfection. I do like that they have included this lens hood, this square lens hood. This is actually does a fantastic job of knocking down that lens flare. And I was testing it with the lens on and off and it definitely makes a difference using the lens hood. Looking at close up image quality, this lens does not focus very close. We're talking about 1.97 feet or 0.6 meters. So that's not very close. And when I was using it in real world use, I constantly found myself being too close to the subject and having to back away. So this is probably one of the longer minimum focus distances of any of the lenses that I've tested. Having said that, when you do take the photo at that minimum focus distance, you do get a lot of sharpness and a lot of detail in the shot. And if you're using a high megapixel camera, you probably can crop in to make that subject seem a little bit bigger in the frame. But I wouldn't consider this a pseudo macro lens by any means. When we look at the sharpness on this lens, this is surprisingly sharp for the price and an autofocus lens. I think this is probably the most surprising thing for me about this lens is the sharpness and detail you get out of the lens. Now, like many other lenses at f1.8, it's sharper in the center than it is at the corners. And it isn't what I would call razor sharp in the center at f1.8. I would consider it above average and somewhere between good and great, but not perfect. But if I was going to rate the sharpness, I'd probably say a 7.5 or 8 out of 10, which is absolutely incredible for a lens at this price point. I really did not expect it to be this sharp, but it was extremely sharp. The next thing we need to look at is background blur. And I did not expect the background blur to be this high quality out of a lens at this price point. This is a common problem with cheap lenses where you get a busy or messy background blur. And when you've got a lens that goes down to f1.8, you're gonna be taking portraits or pictures of subjects that you want to isolate so people are looking at that subject and blur out that background. It's really important that we get a creamy, dreamy, pleasing background blur because when you take those photos, often only 15 to 20% of the actual photo is in focus. Most of the photo is a blurry background. So having a noisy or messy or distracting or jagged blurry background is just not going to make for a very nice photo. I can report that this lens has an excellent creamy dreamy background blur. I would probably rate it somewhere between a seven and a half or eight out of 10, well beyond what I expected for a lens at this price point. And finally, we have to talk about the autofocus performance on this lens, because that is the one thing that differentiates it between the manual focus lenses that I've covered on this channel in the past. And the first thing I'd like to say is I do have TT Artisan's autofocus lens, which is a 27 millimeter f2.8 lens. And I find the autofocus performance on that lens pretty much on par with first party lenses, whether it be Sony or Fuji. In this case, in my initial testing, I don't think the autofocus performance out of this lens was quite as good as it is out of their 27 millimeter f2.8 lens. And I also found at times the lens benefited from going into the camera and turning down the sensitivity so it was more of a locked on performance and turning down the speed just to make things a little bit smoother. Having said that, I still think in 80 to 90% of situations, it performed on par with the first party lens. And I also found that it worked very well with the eye focus, focus detect, animal detect, train detect, the box locked on like the camera normally would, and the lens could keep up with the movement of the subject in the frame. So I do think that the little bit of lag and performance that this, this lens has behind the other TT Artisan lens or the other first party lenses that you would normally use, will probably be resolved in a firmware update because that's what we've seen from other third-party manufacturers that are releasing autofocus lenses. And finally, I have to ask, who is this lens for? Well, I think essentially it's for anybody who's on a budget, wants an f1.8 lens so they can get a blurry background and isolate their subject, want a lens that is great for doing anything, want a lens that is great in low light, and want a lens that costs well under $200, 
I just think this is an absolute no-brainer at the price point, and it is now going to become one of my strongest recommendations for a next lens after the kit lens. This isn't the only autofocus lens that this company has ever made, and I've just thrown a video on screen now. This is their 27 millimeter f2.8 lens. This is an even cheaper lens, which is extremely small, not quite as good in low light, but if you want a lens that's got a really nice wide field of view, is super stealthy, and just makes your camera almost pocketable, then I would check out this video.